We were watching a show called Drugs Incorporated. You guys heard about that or have seen it? <laughs> Romantic. Yeah. It's weird. It's like um, it's it's kind of like showing you how the drugs are made. You know, <laughs> it's a, a field trip, everybody. Come on. <laughs> and these guys are smart. I mean, they're you know, they're street. But this guy knew the law. He knew marketing. He definitely knew the metric system. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the gram. He didn't even need a scale. He could just hold it and go, oh, yeah, that's about 25 to life right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They interviewed one of his customers. He called them customers. <laughs> and the guy goes, you know, I just I just have a thing for recreational cocaine, which is different than the coke you take just to get through the day. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's good to have you here. I see my mom and my cousin are here, and thank. It's good to see. You know, makes it feel more like family. Yeah, life's tough, man. I wasn't here thirty seconds before some dude in a mask slapped me to oh. make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long way to go for that joke, wasn't it? <laughs> Do doctors still slap babies? They probably don't, huh? Oh, oh, oh God. Now, nowadays, the, the kids will just sue. <laughs> I was emotionally triggered. <laughs> the rough life, man. Einstein, smartest man in the world, had a hard life. Four marriages <laughs> by him. <laughs> Yeah, by the end of it, he's like, E equals NC squared on a good day. <laughs> I don't know anymore. So, yeah, Patty and I, we went to Descanso Gardens. They have this Halloween thing called Carved. It was magical, dreamy. Yeah, it's like uh, I just I keep falling in love over and over. It's really nice. Yeah, we went to the movies and hey, you ever been in the line in the concession line and you get stuck behind the family that's like making a meal of it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yeah. Give us four popcorns, a uh, round of sodas, a uh, pretzel with cheese. Uh, you want some appetizer, honey? Maybe a little milk, milk duds? We'll get it going. <laughs> A kid punches it all into the register. You know, that'll be six hundred dollars, sir. <laughs> <laughs> or what I like to call a month's pay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ouch. Yeah, Carmen and Betsy said that Descanso Gardens is amazing. It is. Descanso Gardens is, Where pretty, is that? pretty cool. It's in uh, La Cañada by Pasadena. Oh. Yeah. And then what you do beforehand, we went to this little place called the Black Cow Cafe in Montrose, which is right next to it. And they have uh, like Christmas lights wrapping around all the trees. And uh, it feels like Disneyland. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've been trying to get out more. You know, when the times that I am home, we're trying to take advantage. Um, we went to the beach. We bought a beach chair from Big Lots and it broke on its maiden voyage. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we take it back to Big Lots and the lady's all like, is there, she goes, uh, was there something wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we bought it at Big Lots. So. <laughs> so Patty wanted to sit on the beach, on the sand. And I'm like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, no one ever cleans the beach. It's just, I mean, imagine the history of cigarette butts and Jägermeister oh. and seagull crap. Just, yeah, debauchery that happens on the beach. Here's what I think. I think we should take all the beach sand and replace it with Arm and Hammer clumping kitty litter. Yeah. <laughs> and then every day a tractor will come through. <laughs> <laughs> that joke was brought to you by Arm and Hammer, serving you <laughs> since 16, 1864. <laughs> I'm a moron, man. I just stupid things just leave my mouth and I'm like, no, I can get it back here. <laughs> Uh, I went to, I was at the store and a guy just goes, Hey, it's a gorgeous day out there today. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like this, this perfect time between winter and summer, you know, he's like autumn. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, they, yeah, they, they have a word for that autumn. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. 
we were uh, we were at the store. We came across spam. They're still making spam. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it. Like in in 2021, we don't even know. We to this day have no idea what's in spam. <laughs> it's like whatever didn't make it into the hot dog. It's yeah. oh, spam. Oh, 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 oh. No expiration date. It's like <laughs> best if not used. <laughs> At the dollar store, we found grapes with seeds in them. Now, now that's something I know that we eradicated like in the sixties. I mean, we're just going backward. When am I going to go to the post office and find lickable stamps and <laughs> I mean, go to the doctor? I'm sorry that you say that you have polio. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? You know what I'm finding is happening with um, businesses is that they're using the whole pandemic as a reason to do things that they wanted to do anyway. You know, we went to uh, the store and it was eight o'clock on a Friday night. No checkers. Zero. Zero checkers. Mm -hmm. And then as we left, they had the gall to put a sign on the wall that said employee of the month. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be a mirror. So when we walk out, like, yeah, damn it. Uh, that's a slippery slope, just delegating work to the, com the com customers like that. I mean, they're in, it started slow. That's the thing. At first, they had us bag the groceries. They're like, hey, let's, let's see if they bag the groceries. And we did. We, we're like, I guess I'm, I'm bagging now. And they're like, hmm, interesting. Why don't we have them work the register? <laughs> I mean, how long before they just hand us a mop? Clean up. All <laughs> 10, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And uh, whenever I get it, I get the, the machine just rides me the whole time. Like it's got this whole, like, you know, I'm like trying to do my first day on the job. I'm trying to punch in the things. It's like, please return items to bagging area. Like, Re-enter code for produce. Should a man really be buying ointments? <laughs> <laughs> Telling you. Well, how about this? Let's do um, let's do one thing on the guitar. I've been um, yeah. Why not? This is a kind of a, a new idea. Oh, spam. Oh, here goes Tony. Uh, we have a fact checker, ladies and gentlemen. Spam only contains six ingredients: pork with ham. <laughs> Meat added, that counts as one. Meat added. To, you, you know, you know you're in trouble when it's meat. Like they don't even specify what the meat is or where it came from. Sugar, sodium, and nitrate. You need nitrite to I don't know. I um it's funny, we've been in this house now for 10 years paying someone else's mortgage. And um <laughs> Our neighbor, we've been watching him grow up. He was a baby when we got here, and now he's like 12, and he's got girls coming around. And it's a, kids are growing up quick, man. It's a different time. I want to put sweaters on them. You know, they, they got all their parts hanging out. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep this clean for you all. And then, um, I don't know, he's going away to math camp. And uh, it just makes me think back. Remember the song Camp Granada? And it's a uh, <laughs> hello, Mada. And it's a kid. Hello, right, right. Hello, Fud. And he wants to come home because it's, uh, you know, he's got poison ivy and his bears and is innocent. That's how I still think of teenagers. So I'm, I think it's more like this here. He's going away to a math camp in the woods, co ed. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mada. Hello, Fada. Here I am at Camp Algebra, but I won't be coming home because I'm killing it with all these girls from China. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's how I imagine it. OK, that's my time as your host. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, we have a great show for you. Um, let me get everything all situated here. We have, uh, like uh, Tony said, we put a lot of care into the people we have, and we only want to give you the most professional comics, and uh, that's why we keep going when most of the other shows have fallen off. But it's mostly because of you, the audience, 
That is the secret sauce in this show. So <laughs> your next comedian, a super funny guy. He was awarded the funniest person in Oregon. He had, uh, he's been on Portlandia a few times, the Holy Grail for comics. Put your hands together for the very funny Alex Falcone. <laughs> Hey, thank you guys. One more time for Jason Love, huh? Oh, yeah, that was a great Jason. set. Jason. Great set of teeth. Boy, he has nice teeth. Um, so very funny. It's so nice to be here, you guys. If it weren't for the show, I would be in a different chair. And uh, always nice to get to come to the nice chair in the evening. I'm I'm glad we were still doing this. I know it's it's changed a little bit from the earlier Zoom shows. Like it used to be, uh, people didn't feel the safe going out, and now you guys just don't want to. And I respect right. that a lot more. That is awesome. <laughs> we got the people who would prefer to be inside. You are my people. Uh, I, and and I also I love Zoom shows. I've I've enjoyed this the whole time. I like any time I get to do comedy. I love jokes. I love hanging out with people. Uh, it's it's great. It's still comedy for me. You know, I I love it when it's in clubs, when it's in fancy theaters. Like what? Either way, I'm just talking to somebody so they will drink longer. That's my job. Uh, I love it, even though at any moment all of us could be replaced by pretzels. <laughs> it's our job. <laughs> Um, this is a little different, actually. I've never done a show where this many people held up matching hot pepper flakes. That was new. <laughs> I, I haven't been here before. I don't know if this is an every week thing. <laughs> That's an interesting, interesting thing. You guys don't dress. It's like when you go like to the movies and you dress up as the characters, but you guys all came in character as person who bought hot peppers. It's great. <laughs> uh, pepper cult. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Um, also, it's good to see. I love the way this is divided, by the way. I love that I get to see so many wonderful panelists and also the people who are in Zoom timeout. If you guys are very nice, someday you might be on the better side of the Zoom. So be good today. I, uh, it's nice that we get to go back out. It's, all, it's also fun about this is none, none of us have to wear masks right now, which I like. Although I will be honest, I kind of like the masks because I have I have bad teeth and good eyebrows. So that was a perfect size. <laughs> and there's almost enough room for a granola bar in there. It's like, I just wanted a little bigger. I want like a feed bag, like a horse. I just want to have some snacks and you cover up my other chin. That would be great. Um, I did see some dogs earlier. I don't see where they went now, but there were some dogs earlier in the show. This is actually by far the best part about Zoom is we get to see. I think in comedy clubs, there should be a two dog minimum now. We should figure out. Yeah, Robert's got a dog. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Nancy's got a cute. Oh, look at that. Look at man. I love it. Oh, it's so good. I oh, Carmen with a great dog. Good job, dogs. All right. Keep them out. I love them. Keep all the dogs. I'm a big fan of dogs, and I, uh, my wife and I have been talking about maybe getting a dog unless one of you is my landlord, in which case we are not talking about that. I promise. <laughs> and I did not put a hole in the wall to hang that up. I would never have done that. Uh, I do. I love all dogs, too. Every one of your dogs, great dogs. Linda, great dog. Good job. I love that dog. I love all of the dogs. Joey's dog, yes. I, some people, I don't know if you noticed, some people are kind of size racist about dogs. Some people are very particular. I don't care. I like all the sizes of dogs. Some people don't like small dogs. I love a little dog. Put him in a bag, take him to go. That's a great dog. <laughs> some people don't like really big dogs. I love a big dog. It's just got more surface area for scritches. That's what I like. Give, I can scritch this dog all over the place. Is it, my favorite dog, I love a mid-sized dog, perf, is perfect for me. My favorite dog that we've ever invented is the Corgi, which is like big dog body, small dog chat. Seat, right low to the ground hugs the corners but fast off the line won't roll over it's got low center of gravity also looks like a tiny hippo perfect dog <laughs> i love a corgi my favorite thing is when dogs i love dog tricks i love when you have a dog that can do tricks but i like the normal tricks i like just like a sit stay roll over i don't need to be fancy i had a friend i went over to their house recently and he was like check it out i have this new trick for my dog and he did uh he did finger guns and the dog put his <laughs> tiny perfect innocent pause in the air <laughs> and then he said bang and the dog fell over and pretended it was dead <laughs> so what part of that is adorable <laughs> where's the cute part of that like i like your dog i want to see it to, you know this is a part of the family i want to see it to do tricks i don't want i wasn't like oh i love your dog can you show me what it's like when he begs for his life 
<laughs> it's a terrible trick. I want a trick where the dog is the hero of a very short play, right? Like shake. You're like, you're a tiny business dog. We just did a deal. Scene. That's a good trick. <laughs> Perfect trick. I like a uh, high five. You're like, this dog just got laid. Whoosh, good job, dog. <laughs> Scene. That is a great trick. But this one is like, your dog is getting mugged. He did everything you asked and you killed him anyway. It's so messed up. <laughs> Next, you're going to be like, oh, this is a cute trick where I tell my dog he's been evicted. He gets all his toys together and then puts him out on the lawn. That's a cute trick. <laughs> I, ha- I love I-, I love animals actually I love all animals I'm a huge fan of animals I like animals so much sometimes I go to a game Big Buck Hunter and I put a dollar in it don't touch the gun I just watch the deer frolic <laughs> really love animals man uh, I have a nephew uh, who also loves animals he's um I don't know if you can see he's this old I don't know how kids age he's uh he can walk but not drive how old do you think that is anyway <laughs> He's a kid, aged kid, and he um, he loves animals. And so we talk on Zoom sometimes. We t- I'm telling, like, we tell each other new animal facts whenever we learn them. So we were talking on the phone the other day. He Ooh. told me he just learned that a cheetah can run 75 miles an hour. And I was like, that's cool. And so I told him that turtles can breathe through their butts. We have different <laughs> kinds of facts. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that one in school, but it is true. Uh, it's a fun, fi- fun thing the turtles can do. They're not technically a butt. It's a cloaca, but you get it. Um, I didn't want to explain it to him. He's a kid. He doesn't know. Um, but it did get me thinking. We were talking about all these cool different animal powers. And so I've been thinking about, like, what would be the best animal power to have? If I could take, like, one thing from the animal community. And there's there's a lot of things people suggest. Some people want to, like, to be able to, like, be invisible, like, like a chameleon blend in. And that's a creep power. I don't want that. I'm not a creep. I don't need that. Um, a lot of people say they want to fly. And I don't think I want to fly because I already have the power to jog and I never use that. <laughs> why, why am I going to wish for something else that's exhausting? Right. You know, flying has got to be hard. I'm sure it's hard up there. It looks very hard when birds do it. I feel like you're just wishing for sky exercise. Basically, that's all that is. <laughs> Plus your bones would be very fragile, you know, you osteoporosis because they're hollow. Anyway, I don't know if I want to fly. You can, you fly and you, you probably, some of you are thinking that you would like to fly and I will prove to you right now that you do not want to fly in one word. Pigeons. <laughs> right? Because pigeons can fly and they hate it. Right? You drive your car at a pigeon, you're inches away and it goes, Ugh. <laughs> 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 I'm not flying. I hate it. The only power I've thought of that I would like is um, squid ink. I think that would be really fun. Yep. Mm-hmm. My favorite, like, I want to shoot a cloud of ink out of my body anytime I'm startled, you know, just for like <laughs> awkward social situations. I think that would be really fun, right? Like, I'm at a party and someone is like, wow, I had the craziest dream last night. <laughs> squid ink. I don't care about it. I'm in the other room. Yep. I don't even have to. I don't care. <laughs> I, uh, I have been back traveling again recently. I actually had my, I had a, a lifelong dream come true the other day. I finally, I was on a flight and they asked, is there a doctor on board? Oh, I've seen it in movies. I was so excited. I was finally getting to live. I didn't know it was real. I didn't know they actually did that, but they asked if there was a doctor on board, but then no one raised their hand for kind of a while. And so I started thinking, how long do I have to wait before I have to ring in? Like how far down the, you know how like if like 74 people die, the mayor of Cincinnati gets to be president or whatever. It's like that. Like how far down the list you go before I have to be like, I took CPR in seventh grade. What do you need? They finally, so actually, so nobody, nobody rings in for doctor. And then finally they were like, is there a nurse on board? And then somebody volunteered and it was very, I was like, okay, well, glad we didn't get all the way down to me. Um, But it does feel weird to be like second choice doctor for this person who's very sick. Anyway, he died. It's fine. Um, oh, didn't die. No, no, he's fine. He's totally fine. Yeah, they gave him some water and he laid down. It was fine. But um, uh, because it was in the sky, it was out of network. So we paid $12,000 for it. Right. <laughs> that was the problem. I think he paid in miles. I don't know. I'm not sure. Paid in miles. Uh, I do. I do like traveling. I'm glad I get to travel again. My favorite thing about traveling is trying new restaurants. I'm a, I'm kind of a foodie. Uh, no, sorry. That's the wrong word. Um, a glutton. I'm a glutton. <laughs> I, too much. And I love it. Uh, so I love going to new places. The only thing that's hard is when you're traveling, sometimes I have to like pick a restaurant based on a Yelp review. I don't know if you guys have seen Yelp reviews, but apparently we assigned the job of reviewing restaurants exclusively to crazy people. 
<laughs> Why did we do it? Everyone, every Yelp review reads like the person just got out of a divorce proceeding. They're so angry. Every one of them is like, they wouldn't let my dog sit at the bar. Like, yeah, it's a people restaurant for human food. That's normal. <laughs> I was in New York a month ago and I was looking at a bagel place and the top review of this place said too much cream cheese, one star. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know how bagels work. I don't. <laughs> that's the whole point. Is the cream cheese? We were, nobody was like, I wish toast was chewy and the middle was missing. We're they there for to- spreadable <laughs> cheese. <laughs> how bad is your life that you get a little bit of extra cheese for free and you're like, the internet needs to hear about this. <laughs> the justice will not stand while Tom has a computer. Okay. <laughs> how much cheese was it? That's what I want to know. It better have been a lot of cheese for one star. It, it better have been a Nickelodeon game show amount of cheese. Like you walked in there, got slimed on the way in. Even then, that's two stars for me. Big fan of cheese. I don't like it. I, so sorry, by the way, if I seem kind of uh, tired today. I uh, I gave blood uh, in April. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just exhausted from bringing it up every time I meet new people. I just, you know, I want everyone to know what a hero I am. So I have to figure out a way to work it in. But I managed. So you guys are. You're on board. I did. I, I what happened was actually I started giving blood during the pandemic because a comedian who's much more successful than me, he doesn't even have to do uh, Zoom shows anymore. He tweeted that he had given blood, and it was really important because donations were down, right? And so it was a really important time. And I saw that tweet, and I it touched me. It really did. I was like, if I gave blood, I could tweet about it too. So that's what I did. I traded a pint of blood for 26 likes. No big deal. Uh, uh, actually my favorite part about giving blood is the quiz they give you a very long questionnaire like 200 questions before you give blood that all assume i'm having a much more exciting month than i am every one of the giving blood questions is like have you been to paris recently have you been to south america have you tried any new sex partners have you tried any new sexual orientations have you tried any new drugs have you traded sex for drugs like guys i just wanted to give blood is everyone who comes in here a, like a stoner James Bond? What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> it's a pandemic and I've been married for 10 years. I've traded sex for dishes. Do I need to tell you that? <laughs> that <a> rule? <laughs> it is easy though. Giving blood is really easy. And I do, I say this, I hope you guys take this away that if you haven't done it and, oh, I should say, it's not easy if you're skinny. Sometimes skinny people, it's a problem, but your life is fine. So I don't care about you. Um, <laughs> generally, uh, giving blood is very easy. Uh, it was actually great because I was worried. I thought it was gonna be hard. I thought I was going to be like woozy. I even asked the guy, am I going to be able to drive home? And he, <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. I didn't know. I thought I would be messed up. He looked at me and he was like, if you could drive here, <laughs> not giving you magic powers. I don't know what you think, but I mean, like, yeah, you're going to be fine, I guess. I mean, but you are too stupid to give blood. So I can't take your blood. <laughs> too stupid blood. Oh, no, it was great. All he said was, he was like, it's really easy. Just don't skip any meals. Don't exercise. I was like, well, chief, that was the plan. <laughs> I've never skipped a meal. I eat two meals a day sometimes in the middle of the day, sometimes like a bear getting ready for winter. I always have all the meals. Uh, anyway, that was it. So I think that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of the Zoom show. Thank you for showing me your Nicely done, man. Alex Falcone, everybody. Let him hear it. Uh, you got a lot of comments in there, Alex. Um, Aurora said, loves. Oh, let me put this up while I'm saying this to you guys. This is our next show. If you can mark it on your calendar, as Tony said so articulately, that's our day before Thanksgiving thing. Um, but Scott said that he recommends peanut butter M&Ms in your mask. For uh, oh, instead like of the granola bar, oh. yeah. Martha yeah. loved your cute dog jokes. Gary Hartman once uh, have an ink superpower. You got a lot of comments there, man. Well done, sir. Well done. You should write if you don't already. You could write Portlandia, man. <laughs> Sharp, funny stuff. Thank you. Okay. Your next comedian, ladies and gentlemen, I just worked with her the other day. I don't even remember what it was now, but uh, I always enjoy seeing her. Super funny. She was a runner up for the runner up for uh, the San Francisco International Comedy Competition. Plays all the clubs around the country. Put your hands together for Gina Stahlhaven. Hey, Gina. 
Hello, everyone. How's my sound? You can hear me okay in our virtual? Maybe a little reality. louder, Gina. Can we go a little louder? Can Don't you hear me? Stop. How's that? There you are. Uh -huh. There you go. Ooh. No, hey, that's actually Gina. lower. <laughs> now it's muted. Maybe you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. That, now you're muted. Are you screwing with me, Gina? <laughs> I have no idea why. Okay, there you go. Okay. You're back. Okay. Okay. okay, all right, here we are. I'm so excited to be here, you guys. Thanks for having me into your living room. We're doing everything on Zoom now, right? We are doing even our health appointments. Did you anybody meet their doctor on Zoom during the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, that was a weird thing for me because I've been seeing this doctor for so many years. And then we did the, you know, Zoom appointment and he wasn't even at the hospital. He was actually at his own apartment. And I gotta say, I, I lost a little respect for him once I saw the inside. <laughs> yeah. I was, just, I was looking at him and I'm like, you know what? You're a doctor. You're 48 years old. Like you should not have a futon as a couch. That's not okay. <laughs> right? And, and while we're on the subject, you need to change the battery in your smoke detector. Okay? <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot trust you to be responsible for my health if you cannot change that smoke detector. Okay? What if I, what if I ended up with a pacemaker? I mean, he's not taking batteries very seriously. <laughs> um, so I have been... Um, inside you know with my husband for you know 18 months like we all have been and um uh, yeah I am actually I'm married um I noticed nobody cheered when I said that <laughs> <laughs> no it's too late it's too late you should... three, got it. um Yay. usually audiences are not super excited when you tell them that you're married usually audiences are very excited though when I tell them that I just adopted a cocker spaniel Yay! Yay! Um, Yay! I get it. I get it. So you, that's more exciting for you. Now, would it change your enthusiasm about marriage at all if I told you that my husband is, in fact, a rescue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, I rescued him. Um, actually, I rescued him from his previous owner. Um, she was. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was like moving or she worked a lot. I don't really know the whole thing. Um, uh, I think she didn't have a yard. So uh, anyway, um, when I got him, I was so excited, you know, because it's like something new, of course, uh, even though, you know, I was sort of warned, like, he's not good with kids, you know, um, <laughs> prone to skin rashes you know he gets anxiety if you leave him alone too long you know but uh, <laughs> you know, it's still been working out pretty well although i will say he does get spooked every fourth of july and he gets out of our gate i don't see him for a few days you know <laughs> um, but he's, he's microchipped he's microchipped so <laughs> They just keep bringing tracking. him back. They bring him back every time. Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say, you do when you're trapped inside with someone for so long, you do start to like notice all the little things that annoy you um, about them. Uh, my husband is allergic to gluten. You know, like they can't have bread, can't have all those things. So when we first got together, I actually felt really bad for him, right? Because he can't have pizza or pasta. And, you know, he has to wrap oh. his burger in lettuce. <laughs> very emasculating right yeah. so the longer we were together though I started realizing like just how much power I had over him Ooh. Oh. <laughs> like every time we get in a fight something with my sound can you hear me better now yeah same better same. Right, same. Um, okay same okay good I just want to make sure it's not freaking out on me um yeah so all of a sudden I just realized like he has this weakness where I have this strength you know like every time we get in a fight I got a pantry full of kryptonite <laughs> yeah. so you know like the other night we had a little argument and he you know he like storms off to bed I'm doing the dinner dishes and I'm thinking I could just fill my cheeks with croutons right now <laughs> yeah. I just like let them slowly turn to mush you know and I'd climb into bed and he would inevitably say like can we just forget about this and can I have a kiss good night and I would go uh-huh 
Or, or, you know, maybe, maybe he goes out with some friends, right? Doesn't call me, stays out a little late. And when he gets home, I'm just sitting on the couch in the darkness with a handful of flowers. <laughs> and he, he passes by and I just go. <gasps> <laughs> and he would like inhale it all and, you know, and he would die. <laughs> 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 I saw some concerned faces. He would not die, okay? But he would have he would have flu like symptoms for about a week. So still Ooh. effective. Yeah. Still effective. Okay. <laughs> and I'm I'm not making fun of food allergies because I do know that there are some people where their food allergies are very serious. You some people can actually die from a food allergy. I'm just saying, when you're planning a murder in a marriage, <laughs> you have to <laughs> You know, you have to be creative. I mean, you know, mixing dateline, the spouse is always the suspect, right? So <laughs> I'm just saying maybe the food allergy angle hasn't been like fully explored. That's oh. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Do with it what you will. Um, <laughs> inside for so long I've definitely heard the word nag come up a little bit more than before <laughs> the pandemic um you know and if you're married you, you've probably called someone a nag or you've probably been called a nag you know my husband's like oh she's always telling me what to do pointing out everything I do wrong and I'm like you know what if you're mad at your wife for pointing out your errors it's kind of like being angry at your doctor for finding your diabetes <laughs> <laughs> You did that. I just noticed it. Okay? I was trying to help. I was just trying to help. Okay. Um, because women, we never think we're being nags. We think we're helping, right? I mean, it's it's just like hoarders, right? They don't think they're hoarders. They think they're collectors. Okay? <laughs> Just like women. Hey, we're collectors too, right? Of rage and resentment. <laughs> um, having, having been trapped inside so long, I was like just staring at my husband one day and I realized like without meaning to, once I got married, I gave up my opportunity to ever sleep alone again, which is to ever sleep well again until you die. Okay, because you cannot sleep well with another person next to you. And your bed is supposed to be for sleeping. And I know, I know intimacy and cuddling and sex, blah, blah, blah. But what's your kitchen table for? <laughs> and I always thought I could handle a snoring partner. You know, I thought, hey, if I fall in love with someone who snores, you know, I could handle that for love, right? Because in my mind, I thought snoring was this cute thing Muppets do. Where you have this very sweet little... <laughs> and I was thinking, that's adorable. I can handle it, right? I can handle that. But real snoring. See you on date Something like that, right? Real snoring. It sounds like a demon is coming from the underworld, right? Yeah. You're at your most vulnerable, okay, next to this person you trust, and you get that like, <laughs> and then that little apnea burst at the end, right? So you get the, yes. right? <laughs> right? Like, it's oh, oh, oh. I know. It's coming at you, right? I mean, so here you are thinking that you can trust this person who's showing you the ugliest side of them that they've ever had, right? Here's what I'm thinking. My grandparents had separate beds, twin beds across the room from each other, and they were happily married for 60 years, okay? Because they were so well rested. Right, <laughs> my grandmother, she had the twin bed with the like the bedspread, the coverlet, you know, the thin little covering. So she just had to go, and she was off for the day. That's all she had to do. Now, 
You've got the king size bed with the freaking duvet cover, right? And all the feathers go to the bottom and you got to shake the crap out of it like the rope at CrossFit, okay? Just to get the feathers. And here's the thing. You have to walk 10,000 steps around that bed just to get it straight on all the corners. My Fitbit is calling emergency services, okay? (laughs) And if there's other issues with this large bed. I mean, if you have kids, you might go to bed alone, but they come in in the night, these children, because there's room for them. They bring a friend, some toys, there's a raccoon in the fitted sheets, like... (laughs) If you had a twin bed, your children would come in at night, they would climb over the top, and they would fall down on the ground, okay? (laughs) And they would end up on the floor where they belong. (laughs) And and I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I do truly love my husband and my children. I always wanted to be a mom. I have three children of my own. I have a 13-year-old, a five-year-old, and I actually have a six-month-old baby. Oh. I know, right? It's that darn shared bed. I'm telling you. Don't share bed. bed. Don't share bed. Um, but I will say this. I always wondered what kind of a mom I would be because I heard people talk about this like mama bear thing, you know, where you just want to protect your babies. And people say, oh, it's just instinct. It will happen. So I always wondered if I would be like a mama bear who wanted to protect my baby. And what I learned is some mama bears, they kind of just like scare off the predator a little bit. Rawr! And some mama bears, they murder the predator and then they dangle oh. the carcass for others oh. to see as a warning, right? <laughs> and recently, actually, I'm that second type of bear, okay? Because my daughter yeah. came home from school yes. and she said, Liam said I'm ugly and I have a unibrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so oh. I thought I would be the type of mom that would say, you know what, honey, there is <clears throat> nothing anyone could say about you that would change how beautiful you are on the inside and the outside. But it turns out actually (laughs) that um, I'm the type of mom who says, Liam said that? (laughs) Little little skinny blonde Liam who sits in the front of your class. That little piece of garbage better hope I don't find out where the hell he lives. (laughs) Oh my God, got emotional. That was not appropriate. I'm sorry, baby. Let, let me try again. Let mama try one more time. Honey, does Liam have any food allergies? <laughs> All right. Gina Stallhaven, everybody. So, Gina, you have... You have a ton of uh, great comments there. I'm going to put this up while I'm while I'm going over this. Well, first of all, let me tell you that uh, Susan Rourke said, "You go, girl." LOL on the rescue dog. Um, and Carmen and Betsy says, uh, "Carmen said hers is, husband is also a rescue." And uh, we got. And uh, Glenn said he hopes your husband doesn't have fleas. <laughs> They're doing their own jokes in the margins. Uh, Aurora gave you an LOL. You got a lot there. Charlie Curris said, unbelievably funny. And I know that um, some of you had trouble hearing Gina, but let me tell you this. Gina um, tries and she's got great lighting and uh, it really comes across. She asked me in advance about the sound, but I think what it is in the mysterious world of Zoom is trying to suppress your background noise. So anytime we laugh and it goes through your speakers, it softens your voice. So we're all kind of leaning in and maybe not laughing as hard as we would so that we don't hurt your voice or your, so we can still hear you because you're so damn funny. So sorry for those of you. And Leslie goes, can the host, does the host have control over that? Oh, Leslie, Leslie, Leslie. (laughs) The host has absolutely no control over that. (laughs) Oh. If I, I have a laundry list, Leslie, of things that I would love for Zoom to incorporate. And that's on the tippy top, that if I could just like like, increase the volume of the speaker and suppress the laughers, oh, we'd be golden. So I pay them $200 a month. Maybe if we paid them a thousand a month, they they could do that for us, I don't know. 
<laughs> okay, and my dwelling, is that a little bitter? It's a little bitter. It's, all. <laughs> it's tough to send that money sometimes. That's all I'm saying, because this is a, we do this every month. Okay, great job, Gina. Everybody loved you. You know, the sound wasn't bad. It was just, we had to lean in. That's all. Okay. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. All right. Well, I just work with this gentleman. Was that last night? I think it was. Oh, it's all a blur, folks. It's all a blur. Yeah, uh, I worked with him in Palm Desert uh, either last night or the night before. Super funny guy. He has a dry bar comedy special. He's a regular on Carnival Cruise Lines. He's been on The Sopranos. Put your hands together for Jimmy Della Valle. <laughs> Where you meet, Jimmy? Jimmy! There he is. Jimmy. Jimmy. You're muted, Jimmy. You're muted. Am I? No. No, I have a mute. Oh, we need to increase your volume, man. So go to the mute. Go to that little mute icon in the bottom left. Yeah. And then hit. Um, what do we hit? I forgot. It's been a while. Audio settings. Audio settings. And then jack your microphone all the way to the top. And then uncheck the thing right below it that says automatically adjust microphone volume. Do you see that, man? You look like you're not seeing it. Or try taking your headphones out, like undo your and unplug those. Can you hear, Can you hear me? That's better. Yeah, yeah. All right, then I'm, I won't yeah. use that. Woo. There you go, man. There you go. But how you doing, people? How you doing? Good, good, good. good, good. Right. I uh, it, I haven't did the Zoom in a while. I I, I forgot about putting the light and all that. You know, uh, I, you know, right before COVID, I, I'm been a comedian thirty years. Work all over the world. Uh, uh, as I say, I, I told my wife the whole time during COVID. I said I work all over the world. That's right. I work. She goes to the Caribbean. Relax. You're a cruise ship. That's the thing, folks. I couldn't continue doing these Zooms. I, I've been a comedian too long. This is all I could ever do. Back, back in New York, I used to do a lot of volunteer work as a kid. I was a good boy. I did volunteer work. Well, the judge called it community service. I used to be in a gang back in New York. Are there any New Yorkers here? Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good, good, good. I was in a tough gang. Uh, it's weird though. I'm Italian, Brooklyn. I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I'm supposed to be in the mafia. I guess they lost my application, <laughs> and I ended up in a Jewish gang. <laughs> we had the yarmulke, but we we're in a gang, so I tilted it to the side. Yeah. <laughs> we're like east side, west side, circum side. <laughs> cut you. We'll we'll cut your taxes. <laughs> PG show. We got to be clean here, folks. <laughs> Just got back from Vegas. I love, uh, have you guys been to Vegas lately? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I was doing shows for uh, two weeks, <laughs> performing at the Bellagio. I was excited. I love working at the Bellagio. I love uh, Vegas. I love the slogan. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Vegas. They're talking about your money. <laughs> 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 My favorite game. In Vegas is Texas Hold'em. Do you guys like Texas Hold'em? Oh, it's yeah. the coolest oh. poker game. I, I got to be honest. I was in the World Series of Poker. I got to day four, right before COVID, the main event. I could have won millions of dollars, but I didn't. And now I'm here for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and, and, but I do. I love, I love Texas Hold'em so much that when I – uh, get romantic in the bedroom with my wife. I bring Texas Hold'em in the bedroom with me. I look, her, I look her dead in the eyes and I go all in. <laughs> I always laugh. Oh, yeah. And then she goes, I think you're bluffing. <laughs> I fold, I fold. <laughs> I do love Vegas. I, I, every time I'm in Vegas, I do crazy stuff. Like the other day, I got drunk and I went dove hunting for the first time. Yeah, I was pretty good with the gun. I was like, bam, 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 bam. bam. <laughs> 
the magician was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> David Copperfield hates me. Oh, that's funny. A, a lot of people don't know that uh, Italians were the first magicians. Think about it. Yo, Vinny, take this body. I need you to cut him in half. Get rid of it. I need you to cut him in half two more times. Show <laughs> your feet are wiggling. And then make it disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, here's the thing about me, folks. I'm not a smart guy. This is all. All I can do is stand-up comedy. Uh, people go to college. For me, nah, college was tough. So I didn't go. No. To uh, get into a good school, you got to take this test called the SAT. Yeah, I'm not a good test taker. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking a test on Saturday. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm right? Because I'm hungover on S U N. I am. I'm not. I'm not. A, I don't. I don't have a big vocabulary. In fact, vocabulary is the biggest word in my vocabulary. My vocabulary. <laughs> I swear to you. Just up till the other day, I thought euthanasia meant the kids in China. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a date with this girl and she goes, just so you know, I'm really anal retentive. I said, oh, this is a first date. <laughs> now what happens is, I, got a, I don't have a big vocabulary. I thought monogamy was a wood. <laughs> My wife hates me. She goes, Does that mean that you're cheating on me? I go, Nah, you know I'm monotonous. All right. Nice. Yeah. I thought that bipolar meant I was attracted to dudes. <laughs> you know what to do, David. You seem like a guy that watches the Discovery Channel. Do you know what to do, David Cooper? If a bear attacks you in the forest, uh, I'm there. <laughs> that, no, you're gonna die then. Okay, you have no idea. <laughs> if a bear attacks you, they say you're supposed to. Ah, you're supposed to lay down and play dead. So the bear can eat you slowly. <laughs> hey, right? Now, I, uh, I am a gambler. Uh, I, a lot of people don't gamble. It's Because I, I come from the family of gambling, man. My father was a degenerate gambler. And most kids, <laughs> when you're younger, you get to go to the zoo. Well, I never, ever got to go to the zoo because my dad always brought me to the horse races. And so, yeah. I remember the first time I went to the zoo with my ma, she was so upset. She went to the concession stand. She goes, what can I get you? I go, five dollars on the hippo. Five dollars on the giraffe. <laughs> and the monkey won. The monkey won. Awesome. Here's the thing that you, you know who's upset. See, we're all back to normal and stuff. You know who's upset? about COVID, who, who, who doesn't want COVID to end. Everybody wants it to end. You know who doesn't? The elbow, huh? The elbow got a lot of action. The elbow got a lot of action, you know? The three the elbow, I mean, everything. It was like, hug me, I'm like, no, bam, hit it right in the face. Like, the way. Now here's the thing, folks. I see a lot of people here, you guys are enjoying your lives and stuff. Did we get vaccinated? I like to know that. Yes. 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 I got uh, no. Moderna. Are we Moderna people? Are we Pfizer? No. No. Johnson and Johnson. Yay. Yeah. Who got Johnson and Johnson? Uh, well, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. <laughs> Here's the thing I wanted Johnson and Johnson. But I'm married to a Latina. <laughs> that makes sense, right? I'm married to a Latina. She's very bossy. Party. She told me if I got Johnson & Johnson, because she got Moderna, she got side effects. And she said, I want you to get Moderna. I said, but Johnson & Johnson, one shot, then I'm back on tour, 400 shows a year. She says, if you get Johnson & Johnson, you might as well just keep driving. 
and don't even come home. <laughs> All right, okay. So, so I get Moderna, we come home and we're doing the side effects and stuff. And my wife got the fever and then she got, she got little like sore, you know, the headache and then she fainted. Oh my mm. God. I, I caught her though. I caught her. She went, I caught her because I'm a knight in shining armor, David. Yeah, you are. <laughs> but I was mad at her. And I dropped her. I dropped her. <laughs> we get Johnson and Johnson. That's right. <laughs> no, so I, I just celebrated 18 years married. How about that? Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's I, I love my wife. Um, I believe that um, in order to be married a long time, because my mom and dad were together 54 years, and that's, uh, ooh, that's a big deal, right? And then, uh, yeah, and then what happened was I told my wife, I said, we're going to be together forever because we're a team. And she goes, eh. <laughs> I want to be traded. <laughs> I, said, when you do I said, when you married me, you hit the jackpot. She goes, penny slots. Okay. Oh. <laughs> said, Seriously, look at this place. You hit the lottery. She goes, scratch off. I said, all right, I quit. <laughs> and it upset me, man, because I do believe that she's my best friend. But then I realized the other day, she's not my best friend. Because my best friend, Vinny, in Brooklyn, would take a bullet for me. I looked at her and I said, baby, would you take a bullet for me? She goes, no, but I would, I would shoot you. I would <laughs> that's the thing, man. We're we're married 18 years to a Latina and I have no children. Yeah, no children. I think I found a Latin unicorn. <laughs> These women are fertile. They're fertile. They can get pregnant over the phone. <laughs> that's why I only text her. I only text her. I, lo I love the text message. Oh my God, I love the text. The other day I was doing the text message and uh, I, I believe that you could text a woman anything you want, fellas. You just need to know the recipe. Like you could say something naughty. You can call her mother a name. You can go, your mother's a jerk and she's fat and I don't like her. But then you got to put LOL. You <laughs> <laughs> And the smiley face. Right. So, uh, la last thing before I go, folks, I want to let you know uh, I have my own sitcom on Amazon Prime now. I don't know if you have Amazon Prime. Oh. Please go to uh, funnyjimmy.com. It stars me and Bobby Costanzo, the legendary Italian actor. And uh, we got picked up for the second and third season, but then COVID hit. So now we're going to probably shoot in 2022. But if you go to funnyjimmy.com, you can add me and, and go to my website and you can watch it for free. I put a link up there so you can watch it for free for you uh, Zoom people. All right. So hopefully you go. And, uh, um, the, last, the last joke before I go, I was uh, watching Cobra Kai the other day. Have you guys watched Cobra Kai? Yeah. It's the greatest show ever. <laughs> I started punching and jumping off out of the, the chair. I got excited. I told my wife, I said, I used to be a black belt, second degree. I said, I will protect you. I will protect the kitty cats. Nobody will ever mess with us. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she looked at me. She was smiling. I said, are you getting turned on? She goes, no, you look like Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> All right, Jimmy Delavalle, everybody. Let him hear it. You, you got a, a lot of comments, Jimmy. And I'm going to put this up one more time, guys. I think I might have done this last time, but if you do feel moved to um, donate to the comics, we make it possible. And there it is. And we thank you for that. Jimmy, uh, I heard my mom laughing the whole time. So that's always music to my ears. Oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> Joey and Michelle are big cruisers, and they uh, they love Carnival. I'm surprised they haven't seen you. Or have you, Joe? Have you, Joey and Michelle? Have you seen Joey? No, I, I don't think it. we have. Yeah. yeah. It's only a matter of time. He, 
He does know. 72 weeks a year on Carnival. So oh, you'll see him. He does a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, Patty Jenkins loved your euthanasia joke. Uh, Robert Power said very funny. And Carl Moss said great job, Jimmy. So thanks for coming, man. Stick in the landing. Thank you. Jimmy also, is uh, he acknowledges the light and he gets off when he should. There are little things going on behind that make my life easier. So thanks for that, man. Okay, are you guys ready for your final comedian? Yeah. Okay, well, as you know, we very rarely have a repeat comic. I think we've had six in, uh, over the course of uh, 60 shows, <clears throat> and every show has 40. So uh, this guy is back by popular demand. He is a, he's, a, he's a friend of mine and a good dude, but on top of it, he's been on The Tonight Show, Larry King. He won Star Search. He won the San Francisco International Comedy Competition. Put your hands together for the very funny Don McMillan. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey Don. Hi, Don. Hello, everyone. Hey, Oh, man, why do I feel like I'm crashing Jason's family reunion? Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> What's really amazing, just Jason's friends are bigger than my entire fan base, which is impressive, Jason. <laughs> That's why he's Jason Love. Look at that. He is. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, oh, great comics. Uh, big round of applause for everybody who's performed. That is a great show. Very funny show. I learned a lot today. I found out I'm a rescue. I had no idea. I learned I'm a rescue. <laughs> I, uh, it explains the collar. It explains the collar. It, um, <laughs> I also, uh, I'm a J&J &J guy, and apparently I'm dying. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I did get JJ, and I'm getting the booster, uh, I, I, and I actually got it at Costco, so I have a nine more. If anybody came in a ten pack, anybody need a booster? <laughs> yeah, three Moderna, two Pfizer, and four uh, four J and J. The way they do the packs there. Yeah. See Costco. Nine. I, love I love Costco. I love it. You know what? I buy everything at Costco. You know why? Low cost per unit. Yeah. That's why I'm an engineer. People, I'm, you know, I have a 12 pack of rakes. I'll never use 12 rakes. Right? I have a 12 pack. Um, it is really, it's, you guys are the best laughers. You know, Jason's paying us for this gig, but I do this for free, but don't tell him. He's not paying attention. Because <laughs> I've been, you know, I, I, it, it, it's so nice to hear. I do, all, I do a Zoom show all the time. I post almost every week and I do it without an audience. And uh, it, it's, I'm just an old man sitting in a room telling jokes to myself. And it's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> the fact that you're laughing right now, it's just thrilling to me. It is thrilling. So, <laughs> if you don't know uh, about me, uh, I'm one of the few comics who works in PowerPoint. So there, I made my, I always make a new new title slide just for Jason. Look at that beautiful face. Like, look at that. It's <laughs> um, but I really do work in PowerPoint. If you think I'm kidding, I'm not. I have a lot of PowerPoints. And uh, I was an engineer for many years. So that was my uh, badge photo when I was, I have a new job. <laughs> oh, Why are people laughing at my badge photo? Why is that? <laughs> um, cubicle. Oh, yes, my own life. Oh, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving you people time to read my charts. I don't have to do my act. I'm just going to put my charts up. That's what I did. <laughs> By the way, since you're reading the charts, I don't normally notice uh, mention this, but I was employee 36 of a startup company at a, in Silicon Silica Valley, and uh, yeah, I I had I worked there eight years. True story, eight years. I had I had founder stock. I sold it all when I left, and I bought a Slurpee, and I owed a 54. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was my business luck right there. <laughs> But I, I've, I've been doing a new thing recently. And, uh, you know, everybody knows Jeff Fox where he does, you know, you're a redneck if. And I'm like, mm, we need something for my nerdy people. So I decided I'm going to, you know, you're an engineer if. Okay? Are you guys into this? Are you guys in your nerdy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is pretty nerdy. So here we go. You know, you're an engineer if. You know, you're an engineer if uh, at the end of every weekend you fix three things around the house. But you've broken six. <laughs> that's, a, that's a typical ratio because, yeah. and things that were six were things that were were working, but you've broken trying to make them better. That's the other thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know you're an engineer if uh, you don't know your son's age, but you know he was born three versions of Windows ago. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he's, uh, I think he's an XP. Windows My son's 35. an XP child. Yeah, he's an XP child. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were just really relieved he wasn't a Vista kid. That would have been horrible. He would not have been stable. Very unstable. <laughs> this is a nerdy crowd. I like this crowd. <laughs> you know you're an engineer. You know you're an engineer if uh, on the SATs you scored 800 math, 200 verbal. I did. did you? <laughs> oh, boy. This is a typical engineer. Me talk good number fun talk not so much. <laughs> you know you're an engineer. You know you're an engineer if uh, on forms you give her home address as 216.27. You got that joke. You got that joke. I didn't think you'd get that. Jason is attracting nerdier friends than usual. <laughs> and he's not a particularly nerdy guy. Jason calls me all the time and goes, Don, can you help me out? I'm trying to. Did you turn it on? Thanks, Don. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, you know you're a nerd engineer. Nerd? You know you're an engineer if uh, the eHarmony algorithm is much more interesting than the person it matches you with. You know you're an engineer. Apparently, we've broken into discussion groups on some of these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need a breakout <laughs> session? With, with, let's take a breakout <laughs> session. We'll be back. In 10 minutes. <laughs> you know you're an engineer. You know you're an engineer if uh, in your last relationship it ended. Your last relationship ended because uh, you're an Android person and your partner has an iPhone. Oh, I can, no, I can not. <laughs> we, we are not compatible. No, we are not compatible. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Jimmy Wait. mentioned that he he, he he thought bipolar meant he was he'd sleep with either sex. I used to think that uh, compatibility meant I would use Android or uh, or our iPhones. I, that's what uh. I used to <laughs> <laughs> uh, You love Venn diagrams. You know, I, I, I'm kind of famous for my Venn diagram. Yeah. I love the Venn diagram. Yeah, people, I, you know, it's so interesting. Pete, we learn Venn diagrams in school and you never use them again, right? You never do, okay. you never, no. Except, you know what they're great for? Comedy. It turns out that's what they're good for. They're really good for comedy. <laughs> I have a bunch, I have a bunch of them tonight. I'm gonna use the one that I use all the time in case there's somebody here who hasn't seen me before, which I think you all have. But this was my basic, my favorite Venn diagram, the first one I ever did. Nerd and geek. Yeah, the nerd and the geek. Cause I'm a nerd, I'm a nerd. And people always go, you're a geek. No, I'm not a geek, I'm a nerd. And what's the difference? A Venn diagram, perfect way to explain it. A nerd <laughs> is three things, three things, three things. All three Smart, right. socially awkward and obsessed. All three of those things. It's right where all three circles interact. I'm a nerd, all right? Gosh. Geeks are really just smart and obsessed. Star Trek geeks, comic book geeks, they go to conventions, they get dressed up. No nerd goes to a convention unless we're working like IT support. If it weren't work, that's where we go. <laughs> yep. At the top there, if you're smart and socially awkward, uh, you're a dork. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been, you know, I can, we've all been spent time in the dork. Re re I mean, I consider my high school years the dork ages. Those are my dork ages. And, um, yeah. and if you're socially awkward and obsessed, uh, you're a stalker. That's the way that works. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is interesting. I realized that I'm not just a nerd. I am more than a nerd, okay? I, I am actually, uh, I, I, I'm in the physics. Uh, I, I actually have a master's degree in physics as well as engineering. So I'm, I'm smart and I'm into science which makes me a nerd, right? That's a nerd. But I'm also crazy because I became a comedian. People say, oh, you're crazy. You gave up your day job and became a comedian. So I throw, I gotta throw crazy in there. Now let's look at this track. If you're into science and you're crazy, you're a mad scientist. I'm that close to a mad scientist. If you're smart and you're crazy, you're a Bond villain, right? That's, that's <laughs> And if you're all those things, you're me. So I am right next to mad scientist and Bond. Just amazing to me. That's awesome. Here's something else. Um, I was oh thinking about it the other day, and I, I decided to put people into three groups. 
do I need to finish the joke? People are just enjoying them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think as many as you. I want copies of these. Not many. Uh, it actually looks a lot like stained glass now that I look at it. It's kind it of nice. Does. Okay. Um, yeah. So I put people into three groups: friends, strangers, and creeps. Now let's let's examine these three parts. Okay. <laughs> if you're a stranger and a creep, you're basically a criminal, right? That's a stranger and a creep. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll start in the most obvious one. If you're a friend and a creep, you're a stalker, right? We've covered that in the last one. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you're a friend and a stranger, I had to think about this one. You're basically a prostitute. Think about that. <laughs> That's a good one right there. <laughs> and if you're a friend, a stranger, and a creep, uh, you're a Facebook friend. That's where you are right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Facebook, I've been thinking about Facebook and all the social platforms, and I realized they can be broken down if you really, and people who know me know, I do. I spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff, and I decided when I would analyze social platforms, I'd break them into four groups. There's a, a groups, there's four smart people about smart people, and about dumb people, and four smart people. That's it. I like the concept. I do like the concept. Now, where do the different different platforms fall? Now, if it's for smart people and about smart people, I don't know if you ever spent any time here, but it's totally not entertaining. You probably haven't, but LinkedIn is where you go. There's nothing funny about LinkedIn. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, I swear, they kicked me off of LinkedIn. I was on LinkedIn. I kept telling jokes. They're like, we can't have humor. Yeah. No, no, we can't have humor. I'm a comedian. That's my job. Cut, stop it. Okay. Now, if you're uh, about dumb people and for, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if it's for smart people about dumb people, that's Facebook, right? You go on Facebook, people are posting, writing these big, long diatribes, and they're basically slamming everybody, telling everybody they're stupid. If it's about smart people, but for dumb people, so it's dumb people slamming smart people, they can't type, so it's got to be Twitter. You know, they're limited in text. <laughs> <laughs> we got, got a limit to them 144 or if they can't type you got instagram take your choice there you got one of the other. <laughs> and if it's about dumb people and for dumb people and i swear if you spend any time on this platform you will become a dumb person that would be tiktok that <laughs> It is the biggest, su it sucks your brain out of your head. The day will disappear. You look down, flip up four times, look up, 12 hours gone. It, it's <laughs> <ADD. laughs> Horrible. Now, here's something interesting about Venn diagrams. I thought I would share this with you. I, I actually use Venn diagrams to analyze jokes. Because if you think about it, the way a Venn diagram is, it takes one idea, which is here, and it has another idea, which is here in the intersection, is where two ideas that you wouldn't think would go together intersect. That's the joke, right? Where the two ideas come together, that's the funny part. So it's great at analyzing jokes. So I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna tell you a joke and then I'm gonna analyze it, you'll see. So <laughs> oh my God. I, uh, I once did a benefit in uh, Newport Beach. You guys all know Newport Beach? No, Newport Yay. Beach? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Ever been there? Okay, so I did a benefit in Newport Beach to raise money for the uh, boatless. Yeah, a boat, uh, yeah. <laughs> Boatless. 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 Yeah, there's several people who didn't have boats. It's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> now, let's look at why that joke works. Okay, for that joke to work, these two things have to intersect. You have to have been to Newport Beach and know they don't allow homeless. And that intersect is 72%. <laughs> I, I figured that joke was going to work there. I, I had a good idea. Here's another one. This is going to be nerdier. Won't have as good a reaction. So here we go. An Adam walks into a bar. Now, I did this. I did this joke, by the way. This is a joke I wrote in 1993. Yeah, something like that. Um, mm. Yeah, for the American Association of Physicists, which, by the way, dream gig for any comedian right there. Um, <laughs> so when Adam walks into the bar, says, uh, give, me a, give me a drink, give me a double. And the uh, bar director says, you look terrible. What's your problem? And the Adam says, oh, I lost, a, lost an electron today. And the uh, bartender says, are you sure? And the Adam says, I'm positive. Oh. <laughs> oh. Grown, I don't care. Grown, grown. <laughs> you, 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 you grown, but those physics people love this joke, okay? Oh. They were like, oh. <laughs> Adams can't walk. Adam can't walk into a bar. This guy's crazy. <laughs> hey, 
makes you have <laughs> discrete energy levels, but don't get me started. I can't believe you. Don't <laughs> no picture so, that. Uh, the atom, why, why does this joke work? Let's look at the Venn diagram analysis. For that joke, you have to understand basic atomic <laughs> physics and been to a bar. And that overlap turns out to be 46%. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as big a limit. So, so I, oh, I have to tell you that I, I threw this in here because this is a true story. I tell this joke at a, a club at Rooster Tea Feathers in Sunnyvale. Jason knows it very well. I, it's a true story. It's a Friday night light show. I tell that joke and there's a guy in the front who happens to be drunk and he's a chemist. Yes. And he starts heckling me. He starts heckling me. He's like, that's not, that's not a physics joke. That's a chemistry joke. That's a chemistry joke. <laughs> you get the wrong type of science. It's a chemistry joke. <laughs> I'm getting tech. I got technically heckled. It's a true story. I really did this. Really did this. <laughs> so I said to him, you know, sir, no, it's not. It's, uh, you want a chemistry joke? Here's a chemistry. And I made this chemistry joke up on the spot. Same bar later that day, a catalyst walks in. The bouncer stops and goes, hey, hey, where do you think you're going? Last time you came in here, you started something. That is a chemistry joke. Uh, 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 and for that joke to work, by the way, you have to have understand reactive chemistry and been in a bar fight. And that overlap is only uh, <laughs> All right, one of me, I'll get this. You won't get this joke, but this is my favorite joke to tell because nobody will get it and you'll see why. So uh, an electron is driving down the road. Electrons from the other and, and a cop pulls him over and him goes, over. Uh, hey, hey, do you know you were getting 86 miles an hour? And the electron says, oh, great. Now I'm lost. Perfect response. <laughs> per that's perfect. Perfect response. Perfect. For that joke to work, you have to understand the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and have a sense of humor. And that is 1%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, <laughs> Jason, isn't that brilliant? I took a joke that doesn't work and made it funny with statistics. <laughs> uh, Jason, how much time do I have? I, I lost track of my time. I got one minute. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I got to. You know, I want to do this joke because. Uh, uh, go down. What I do? So, this is. Diagrams. Oh, I, it's kind of a Venn diagram. It's a flow chart. I was thinking, am I oh, happy? Physics joke, right? Love the physics joke. I was trying to figure out if I was happy. So what did I do? I made a happiness flow chart. I did this for real. So I figured if I was unhappy, I would follow the flow chart and become happy. So here we go. Okay. This is how nerdy I am. So I started, I looked, I looked at a baby. I looked, I did this when my son was one month old. And I said, here's the key to happiness. Because I started with a simple model. And I said, we'll build from there. So at one month, you got three things to be happy. You got food, yes. You got sleep, yes. You got poop, yes. You're happy. That's all it takes to be happy when you're one month old. That's it. Now you get to 40 and it's a lot more complicated. Okay? <laughs> There's a lot more crap going on, right? I'm going to take a closer look. I mean, you, have, you need money, you need a job, you, you got benefits, uh, you, you have enough vacation, right? Uh, is your health good? Is your weight good? Is your BMI good? Uh, is your blood pressure good? Uh, is your cholesterol level? You got all these levels you got to check your LDL, your HDL, your NHL. Yeah, I don't even know what an NHL is. <laughs> the NBA, NHL. There's too many acronyms. And you got to worry about savings and you got to work your return on investment, your IRA and your SEP IRA and your Roth IRA and your 401k and your 529k if you got a kid or a 51058 if you have two kids or a 216 if you have a four kids. Then you need the newest phone and then, then you need the upgrade and then the other and then you need an iPad and the app air, air because you know that's too heavy. And then you got a TV and then you got an HD TV and then you need the LCD TV and then, the, uh, and then a laser TV and then a smart TV. You know, TV was so smart. It would turn itself off and say, go read a book. That would be a smart mm -hmm. TV. Okay. <laughs> and then your family's got to be happy, right? If your family's not happy, nobody's happy. So let's look at my, look, let's look at my son. Here's my son, my son, Garrett. He's got all this stuff. You know, if he's got enough toys, uh, he's got to be happy. So he's got to be fun. Then there's my cat. My cat's got to be happy. My cat's not happy. I'm happy. For a cat to be happy, right? He needs catnip. He needs to feel like he rules humans. And then he's happy. So my cat. <laughs> he got my dog. My dog, uh, let's see, my dog, he needs to walk every day. He likes his stomach scratched. And he likes to roll and poop. I have no idea, but it makes him happy. So my dog is happy. Let me get to my wife. This is going to get hard. If my wife isn't happy, nobody's happy. And here's her chart. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no clue. I have no idea. I have no idea whether I'm happy. 
But here's what I learned. You get to 90, a flow chart to see and you're happy. right back here again. That is the lesson. <laughs> That's the key to happiness right there. And with that, I'm going to end my part of this big show and say it is so great to see everybody. Thank you for your laugh. Jason, thank you. Nicely or nicely done. Don right. McMillan, everybody. Let him hear it. Very nice. Very nice. Too, Don, you had too many comments and the whole thing for me to even start. Uh, Patty saw you, Jenkins saw you at the uh, Ventura Harbor Comedy Club and said, unbelievable. Our friend Joey from Joey and Michelle, the Carnival Cruisers, is a retired flight engineer, fellow nerd. Yeah. He's not very nerdy, very though. Nerds. Gary Hartman says he's definitely an engineer, but I think he was talking about your dating analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nancy Yemens loved your diagrams. I think your card should say mathematically funny, right? <laughs> I do check my math. I check my math. I'm one of the two. Yeah, these jokes are mathematically funny. Uh